The Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone. Welcome back to another episode of The Pat Dooley Show, episode five. We took last weekend off. As you can see, I did not get a haircut during that time, but I promise by the time I come back next week, it'll be trimmed off. I'm going to get them all cut. Of course, sitting around watching football Saturday was a lot of fun. I consider it to be a national holiday. I think they should be, the government should declare it that way. You should not have to work on the day of Florida's bye week unless, of course, you make chicken wings for a living. Then we need you to be working. But I watched a lot of different things, saw a lot of different things, and we'll talk about some of that coming up. But just want to talk a little bit about the LSU game. Of course, everybody's going to be wondering what happens with Tim Tebow, and we'll see. Uh, again, I don't expect it to be announced until game time just because they want to keep LSU guessing. And anybody who thinks that it's not two offenses that Florida or that LSU has to prepare for, you're crazy because Brantley's going to play something different than Tebow is. It's going to be, even though it's going to be similar in structure, they're going to do different things. They're going to play to John Brantley's strength, much like they did with Chris Leak. Uh, the difference being there's no Tebow to come in on third and one and bail him out. But at any rate, going to Tiger Stadium, always fun. Uh, you know, I've been down there many times. Some of the great uh, performances in the past have come there. If you remember in the 90s, Florida used to go in there every year and win. Even in the 80s, won a lot there. The Tiger Stadium itself is not that intimidating. I think, personally, Knoxville's more intimidating. I think Auburn's more intimidating. But the bottom line, and this is what I'm writing about this weekend, if you got the players, it's intimidating. It's what Phil Fulmer used to always say about the Swamp. Yeah, the Swamp's loud. Yeah, the Swamp's hot. But they're good. That's why it's a tough place to go play. And I think the same is true with LSU over the last several years. And as many of you know, Urban Meyer's never won there. Of course, played there twice. First year was hamstrung. And that was the year that I looked at Florida play and said, wow, maybe this Urban Meyer guy doesn't know what he's doing. And I've told him that story because they had five receivers out there. I think one was Kyle Morgan, Gavin Dickey, Kenneth Tooks on one side. LSU covered with one guy and blitzed everybody. And Florida got five turnovers that day and still couldn't win the game. And then, of course, the game two years ago, where if they don't fumble, if Keith Moore doesn't fumble, they probably go on and win the game. They were the better team, I thought, that day. And Charlie Strong will still tell you Jacob Hester didn't get the first down on fourth and goal. I'm sorry, fourth and one. So we'll see what happens this week. It's going to be interesting. You know, I keep getting asked this question. Is, is, is this a rivalry game for Florida? Well, you can't make it a rivalry game because you got enough of them already. But it's become one of the biggest games every year for the Gators. You know, last year, you remember the atmosphere in the swamp? It was electric. That place was on fire. Um, and that was a, probably one of the best pregame atmospheres I've seen in a long time. Gator fans knew how important that game was. Uh, the game two years ago in Baton Rouge, again, just an electric place to be. But is it, is it a rival? No, you can't say that. But it is the biggest game of the year so far, and it may be the biggest game until the SEC championship game. If Florida wins this game, there's nobody on a schedule where you look at and you go, I don't know. You're thinking they're going to roll through them. But this game, LSU, good defense. Uh, they've got a quarterback who manages the game, really good receivers. Watch for that matchup. That's going to be huge. Their wide receivers against Florida's excellent secondary. That's going to be a big factor in this game. And now we're going to look at the three things I learned this weekend. Number one, the SEC has some really sucky quarterbacks. I thought that guys like Mike Hartline and Jonathan Crompton would improve during the offseason. At least that's what we're being told by their coaches. They're awful. Crompton is one reason that Tennessee is not going to have anything better than 6-6 six and six record this year. And Hartline, while facing two really good defenses in Alabama and Florida the last two weeks, really just those, makes those throws across the body right to a linebacker. He's not very good. And when you look at the SEC, Jevin Snee's really struggling. Who are the great quarterbacks this league? Well, we know the guy that wears 15 is pretty good. And McElroy at Alabama, you've got to give him props. Ryan Mallett, pretty good as well. But the league quarterback play is still not great, and it needs to get great for the teams in the bottom half of this league to be able to pull the upsets. I don't see it. Bandy, terrible quarterback. Kentucky, terrible quarterback. Mississippi State, not much going on quarterback. I mean, that's the problem for these teams. South Carolina, Garcia, I put him in the we don't know yet category, does okay. That's the number one thing I learned. Number two, I was wrong about Gene Chizik. I'm willing to stand up here like a man and say it. I thought it was the stupidest hire I have ever seen in my life. Of the three teams that hired new coaches in the conference, I, I, when you're finishing third to Dan Mullen and Lane Kiffin is among dumb hires, that's really bad. Well, guess what? Lane Kiffin, nothing. Okay, recruiting good, two and three. Dan Mullen, okay, he's done okay there, nothing special. Gene Chizik's five and oh. The guy knows what he's doing, obviously. He knows how to get his players ready to play. He inherited good talent, 
but he certainly uh, hired the right coaches and, and has coached those assistant coaches up to coach well. So my hat's off to Gene Chiswick, if I had one. But I was wrong, totally wrong about him, and I promise not to refer to him as Gene Chizuk anymore. Number three, you still have to have players. You look at the cases of some teams that have been disappointing so far this year. Oklahoma, well, you had the injuries there. It's not because of Bobby Stoops didn't recruit good players. Three major injuries they've already had this year on offense. That's going to hurt any team. Uh, Tennessee, for all the bo boisterous talk of Lane Kiffin, they're not very talented. Uh, they, I'm sure when he brings in another good class, they're going to get there. It's going to take a while for Tennessee. Vol fans, I think, understand that. But around the country, people are going, why does Tennessee stink? Well, they, they weren't good before. Phil Fulmer's to blame for this season, not Lane Kiffin. And Florida State, they can talk all they want about how their recruiting's improved, uh, the rivals, and none of the, uh, none of the services say it has. And now you're seeing it again. They're not good because they don't have players. Coaches matter, but it's still about the players more than anything else. All right, that's going to do it for three things. We're going to come back in just a minute. You know him, you love him. James Bates is going to join us here in the studio to talk a little football. All right, welcome back to the Pat Dooley Show, Episode 5. And we're joined by my good buddy James Bates. You know him well from, uh, of course, all his years as a Florida linebacker, all his years on the James Bates Show on Cox Cable. It was actually, it was like a Wayne's World. It was Wayne's World, and you hooked me up so many times, so it's the least I could do. Anytime you need me, I'm here, Pat. Well, you had the Wayne's World couch going. I, when I came in, I wanted to have the holes in my jeans to yeah. just uh, <laughs> to make it totally the, the, the feeling. And, of course, as many of you know, he's now the face of the Mountain West Conference, and I think that face has got to be chipped out of granite, doesn't it, if you're in the Mountain West Conference? You know, I, I should be able to grow a beard. I shaved for you this morning, <laughs> but if, if you're the face of the mountain, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. You wear a lumberjack shirt. Our good friend Brandon's out there and grew a beard himself, so there you go. You should. Yeah, why don't you just grow a big beard? Because I can't. A Dan Fouts-like it, beard. It's spotty. I can't. Puberty's right. right around the corner. And when it hits, I'm going to grow a full beard. It's easy top. And uh, also a winner of a, a local Emmy. I don't know how many of you know that for his uh, appearance with Todd Christensen in their promo. What's he like to work with? He's awesome. He's he fun. seems a little flaky. No, 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 no. Definitely not flaky. He's 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 different. Yeah. He, he's very different. You know, we all are. But he's he's a great kind of different. He's been so good to me. Um, you know, at one time he was on the number two broadcast team in the NFL right, with, right. with Charlie Jones and uh, and very opinionated. And so you know, so I've learned a lot from him because I'm doing play by play and we're going into our fourth year now working together. And I hadn't done a lot of play-by-play -play prior to going out there. I'd done some, and, and CSTV, which is really who hired me and sent right. me out there, took a chance by sending me out there. And, and I'm very proud of the job that, that I've done, and I've grown you know, in a lot of ways, and, and he's been a big help for me, and, and he's fun. Very you're, knowledgeable. You were doing high school and, stuff before that, right? <clears throat> high school play-by-plays for some state championships? And had done some stuff, like some that. stuff for Sunshine Network at the time, and uh, arena football play-by-play -play as well, and, and some water polo, and some you oh, know, BMX gotta stuff. Be, and, that's got to be fun to broadcast. And he's underwater. Now oh, he's up. Water polo <laughs> is fun to broadcast. It's better than soccer. I'll take your word. Well, and plus the respect that you got to have that. for these guys, you know. Everywhere I travel, it's with a swimmer. I got Tina over That's there. That's true. Know, so. I'd rather watch her swim than watch you do water polo, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> now, certainly, uh, you have the greatest gig imaginable in that you live in Gainesville, but you get to fly out every weekend to cover a, to the mountains and cover a great game. I mean, that must be uh, a lot of fun. But, but tell us, what, how did you talk them into letting you move back here? It was, it was a scary <laughs> moment for the Bates family because we really, we lived in Colorado for two years. Mm -hmm. We had... Oh, 16 months prior to moving out, we found this house that was in Gainesville, and all my work was always freelance, so Gainesville was going to be the place to be for us, and, and i just get anywhere from Gainesville. And so we found this place, and it was a mess, and we spent 16 months renovating it. Busted our butts and got in way in over our heads. We had to put in a lot of grunt work just to make the thing happen. Right. And we're laying the last piece of sod, and the phone's ringing, and it's CSTV. It's like, hey, we want you to move to Denver mm. and the mountains launching and what an opportunity but we wanted to cry because yeah. this was our place so we rented it out for two years and after two years of fun and snow not yeah. fun and sun and, and, <laughs> and enjoying really 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 loving our time in Colorado and fishing and hiking and everything we just missed Gainesville this is really home and we realized that you know maybe we can get this done from there and so we decided that that's what we wanted to do and then I had to make the call. And I don't know that I would have been as, as easy with it if I were the, the powers that be at, at the Mountain, oh. the Mountain West Sports Network. Yeah. 
but they said, hey, if you feel like you can do it, and it's, it's been great. I've been here for almost a year and a half now, and it's a lot of traveling, but when I'm gone, the family's exactly where they want to be, and we've got a great support staff. I mean, shoot, how many times have you and Karen been over to babysit? And that's, that's been That'll wonderful. Be zero yeah. so far, so, yeah. But, you know, and but it's we just, will if you ask. It, okay, that's the deal. <laughs> and, and you can teach them all about the Beatles, because they don't have enough Beatles education. I will. I can't kid. teach them. Now, how, and, how did, what, did this house, did it come with the bocce ball court, or did you... Build that. Yeah, I built. You got to come Is over. Is it high place quality? Is it high quality? It's, it's uh, it's quality. It's it's got some undulations that everybody's got to play on. You got to play the brakes. You know, yeah. you got to play them a little bit. But everybody's playing Rubbing on the, the same green. shoot. Everybody's <laughs> playing on the same surface. And uh, it was something that basketball season, as you can imagine, gets to be such a grind. Mm -hmm. And last basketball season. This is coming off of a summer where we went to New York and played at this place called Il Vagabondo, which is this great mm -hmm. Italian restaurant, and they've got bocce downstairs. I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be fun to have a bocce court? Mm -hmm. Well, basketball season hit last year, and it was just grinding, grinding, and I was just so tired of, of talking and, and smiling, and I'm like, and I would see guys working on the side of the road. I was like, I want to just dig holes and chop wood. I want to just for like a week. <laughs> well, a week turned into two and a half weeks and it would, we busted pipes with bringing in dirt and everything, but it was a mess. But we've got this great bocce court and, uh, and we have so much fun. Tim Walton's a, a regular over that, there. Yeah. He dang won our first tournament at the, at the bocce court. And we got a bocce tree of champions and Irvin came by, yeah, uh, which he, he wrote he told about. Me about that, yeah. Irvin came by and played in a big tournament right before the season, and Mickey Marotti won the tournament and uh, it's been fun. It's, you'll Did come Mickey out to the Mickey Marotti just one. scare everybody into winning? Did he say, I'm winning or I'm crushing this ball in my How hands. does a guy play bocce with luggage in his hands? <laughs> or is that, are those bags that he's carrying around or what? <laughs> to go to the airport, I thought. I thought he was in a rush. Slow down and play bocce. Now, what's, what's your relationship like with her? I know we, I wrote about a little bit about it, but uh, and he's, he's talked about it some. And, I mean, he, he's a hard guy to get to know at first. Yeah. But once you get to know him, he's pretty loyal to his friends. Well, you know, I didn't know him from Adam. And one day I get a Facebook friend request that says Urban Meyer. And I just said, this looks like an interesting <laughs> fellow. I'd I'm like not buying that. LOL, LMAO, LMAO. Like, hey, I like this guy. I like the way he I does his emoticons. He does great emoticons. <laughs> and uh, I just, uh, we just kind of got to know each other early on. And we've got sons that are the same age, and mm -hmm. and, and he's he's been a great friend. He he really has been a, a, a really good friend, and and I feel silly talking about him as a friend because he's Urban Meyer, and you know I go out to the Mountain West Conference and shoot the the Utah people, yeah, they yeah. still look, gosh, Urban, Urban, and and so I'm kind of careful, but he's but he's a, a really good friend that I you know would talk about just like that, and he's so good to, to the, uh, the girls, the Bates girls, and, and to my wife, and he's just, I, I really enjoy being around him, and I enjoy, the friendship aside, I, I appreciate what he has done for this program, and, uh, and, and just, you know, and, Gator, and right? takes, takes care of those kids. No, well, not just the wins, yeah. and there were some troubles off the field this summer, as we all know, but that kills him more than anything, because he truly is turning those kids into good young men. I mean, that's, that's very important to him, I, I do believe that. One last thing before we let uh, James go for now, we'll bring him back for our segment of Either Or. Uh, James, the, uh, we, the concussions are the topic, and I know that there's a lot of people who thought you had a concussion in the national championship game. It actually was low blood sugar, but you have had a couple in your uh, career. And just tell us what that's like in the days after. Huh? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> uh, James? Yeah. Are you, I had a are you still having lingering effects? Is that what you're you know, I'm, 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 I'm hurting for Timmy, for, you know, for all these kids that, uh, that are dealing with this, all these players that are, that are dealing with this, and, and especially, I mean, I obviously never took a shot like, like Tebow did last week, but it is something that, you know, and it is, I, I joke, but it is something that sometimes, oh, oh, maybe yeah. a little bit slow from some of those hits, but at the same time, are these New helmets that are so different. There looking. are new helmets, yeah. They're, but there are all these concussions. And, you, and how many helmets do you see flying off a I know, game? I know. And I think that's the guy's not strapping the second one yeah. on. You know, you, the, the way they're built now, you have to strap them both on. Nobody wants to strap that second one on. Yeah. So you see a lot of them flowing around. But maybe it's a helmet issue. So I, I don't We could know, have Scoop here. Yeah, we could. Scoop on Look the Pat Dooley show. All huh? right. Well, if, if James can keep his wits about him, we're going to come back a little bit later in the show with either or. And he's going to answer some important questions. Now. What? Right now or no. later? Either. Or either yeah, now. Okay. Or we can or either do later. it right now if you want to. I think actually next is yeah. up as the list, or now. isn't we'll, it? We'll do it later. The list is up next. Yeah. Or 
No. Or, or either. Or, what? We'll be right back. Or we'll just do what you want to do. All right, now it's time for another list, and we're going to rank the SEC cities, excluding Gainesville. I live in Gainesville. I don't think it's right to rank Gainesville, but they, the city of Gainesville will be number one in my boat. That's why I live here. But this isn't based so much on stadium or game atmosphere. It's just the city. Friday nights. Let's put it that way. Friday nights in the city. Number five is Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge has got great places to eat, as you might imagine. All, not only the Cajun places, but there's a TJ Ribs is unbelievable there. And you know, somebody asked me once, they go, what are you saying, that you rank cities based on how they, uh, the restaurants and bars? And I'm like, yeah. What else do you rank them on? Well, the parks? Okay. That's, that's not me. All right. Number four, Oxford, Mississippi. And I'll, I will be, confess this. I've never really spent much time in Oxford proper, but the Grove gets them on this list. The Grove is amazing. If you've never been there, just imagine 20,000 of your favorite friends in a field with tents and TVs up. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I'd like to go to Oxford and spend a little time there, but we always stay in Memphis. But I'll still put Oxford number four. Number three is Nashville. And of course, Vanderbilt's a very small part of Nashville, as you know. But what a great town there. I love the strip. Uh, uh, down right down the middle of it where you have all these restaurants and places to go and uh, it's a lot of cultural stuff there as well for those of you who like that uh, but I you know and you can get out of your hotel take a walk go around this, the big stadium where the Titans play uh, it's just a nice place I like Nashville I use always look forward to going there and the number two city on the list is Knoxville Tennessee you got to give it to Knoxville just because of the great river that flows up there all those people coming as the Vol Navy approaches and then Calhoun's is right there they put a couple other places next to it and downtown Knoxville which we hardly ever see is really something special I've been there many times and it's uh, you know we tend to stay up by the airport and then come in but when I've had when I've stayed in Knoxville I've really enjoyed my time there the number one city Athens Georgia Trish and I were there last year for gymnastics and it, it is just a beautiful city when you've got a 24 square foot or square block area with nothing but restaurants, bars, gift shops, and uh, you know co comic book stores and record stores. I mean, I just it's just my kind of town. It's the kind of things I like to do. And if you go for a walk there, the hills are absolutely beautiful. Walk around the stadium. I, I think it's the most beautiful setting for a stadium in the SEC. So those are my five favorite. Sorry, Starkville and Fayetteville, you just missed the list. All right, we're going to come back in just a second. James Bates is going to rejoin us. We're going to do either or. Welcome to another edition of Either Or with my special guest, James Bates. And has Luther Ogle retired, James? Or is he still out there? No, he's, he's, he's retired. And that's, uh, you know, Tina's, Not even on Tina's Halloween? Wish. Tina retired? No, no, the best Luther Ogle, though, is, is Halloween. A kid came trick-or-treating to our house as Luther Ogle and didn't know that we lived there. No. And it was, uh, I ran in and put on my Luther Ogle gear and took pictures with him. And, but yeah, that was, that was a good Halloween. Uh, Halloween story, but yeah, he's, I don't know what happened to Luther. Well, for those of you who don't know, uh, you missed out. Okay, that's all I can say. We're going to play either <laughs> or here. Who is to blame for FSU's mess this season? Either Jimbo Fisher or Bobby Bowden? <sighs> wow. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, it would have to be Jimbo Fisher. It, you, look at, you look at that team now, and you know, Bobby Bowden has meant so much to that team, but, but how much of the everyday goings on does Bobby Bowden have to do with that team? Not much. So the way I see it is, is Jimbo Fisher's the head coach. Bobby Bowden means so much and will always mean so much to that program, but this is Jimbo Fisher and his staff, it's their team. Uh, so, you know, I, I hate to kick a dog while he's down, but that's that's that's, okay. that's a Jimbo Fisher team. That's, I don't think anybody yeah. watching this has any problem yeah. with you kicking that yeah, dog and while he's down. And I don't know Jimbo Fisher like like I know Bobby Bowden, and, and you know I just you know don't want to. Next time you're watching him, that. look at him in the eyes. He looks like Brady Ackerman. It's, it's hard to explain. Okay. But I'll here's my answer. You know who's to blame for this? The president at Florida State University for putting them in this situation where you have. Jimbo Fisher and his guys, Bobby Bowden and his guys, you, you've got a terrible situation with Bowden where you're throwing him under the bus. I blame the president. So there was, was a T-Pay. T-Pay. T, 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 who, who was it? T.K. Weatherall. No, who was it? What rapper was, gonna, was, was trying to be the president? It, there was he a, may be the next president because that T.K. is stepping down. So I blame T.K. or T-Pay. Uncle right, Luke so, should be the president of Miami. Who? L Luther Campbell. He could be. Either him or... Either somebody or else. somebody else. Number two, who's got the better chance of going to New York for the Heisman, Jimmy Clausen or DeCorey Harris? Ooh, everybody was high on, on DeCorey. Um, Jimmy Clausen. 
Jimmy Clausen, just because of the, the way you, you media boys love Notre Dame. And, uh, well, maybe not you, but, yeah, but, but a lot of them do. do yeah. uh, had it not been for, that, for playing so poorly at Virginia Tech, yeah. Because that was the week to take it and run for right. Ja'Cory. Right. I mean, everybody was in love with him, as they should be. That's, that's a cool customer. But I think Jimmy Clausen just kind of, because it's been under that microscope, the, the failures of that program. And now, you know, but you don't see him getting quite the love that they used to as a whole as a program. But I just got to go with Jimmy Clausen. Well, and we'll find out a lot of guests next week when they take on my brother's team in USC. That'll, that'll be a big one there. That's, it's just your brother's team. You don't have to say USC. That's, that's all it is. Well, yeah, I've never rooted for the Trojans before, I know. so I'm just kind of easing my way into it. You know? Well, the thing about DeCorey Harris, hopefully at least finish his third so we can see him in that pink suit that he's promised to wear. Ooh. But, uh, you know, one thing that bugs me about the whole Miami thing is everybody's saying, wow, look at that schedule, the tough schedule they played, uh, and what a you know, job going out and scheduling. Three of them were conference games. You yeah. don't schedule your conference games. And the other one was an Oklahoma team missing its three best players. Great job, Miami, going three and one. Just don't get too caught up in it. Yeah. I, I think it's they've gotten a little too much love. Number three, who starts for Florida quarterback versus LSU? Tim Tebow or John Brantley? Now, but when this airs, when you're watching this, if you've already announced it, don't blame one of us for getting it wrong. Yeah. John Brantley, yeah, if if you know, and not that Timmy needs an extra week for to, to get a feel for the offense but if he, but if he's not meeting and he's not he's not going through practice i think john john brantley is is capable of going out and, and, and doing a great job and, and you know and, and taking it and running and and they're going to do what's right for him i just yeah. i just want what's right for tim tebow he, he's meant way too much to this program that i don't want to jeopardize any anything that that he is going to do in the future and uh my gut says jb yeah, my gut all along has said Brantley would be the quarterback, and everybody has to realize this is not an urban decision, it's not a Tebow decision, it's a doctor's decision. They're going to tell him whether he's cleared, and if he's cleared, he'll play. The only thing is, I, I learned never to bet against Tebow. I learned that the hard way against Oklahoma last year. So um, I, I, nothing would surprise me there. I will tell you this, I don't expect anything to come out until 705 on Saturday night right. when Tebow's either out there in his pads or he's not. Well, maybe all those LSU fans with his number could just call yeah. him and ask him. They didn't hey. even bother to go to his number. They went to Brantley's number. Oh. So, uh, you know, they, well, they know. Maybe they know something we don't. They got scoop. Last one on either or. More likely to go to a bowl game this season. Tennessee or your Wyoming Cowboys? That's right. Wyoming Cowboys. Powder River. Letter Buck. That's a fun. <laughs> that is a fun team. It's a fun program to be around. Laramie, Wyoming is a little bit tougher to get to mm -hmm. than some of these places. Probably like Starkville. No, nothing's and, well, like Starkville. Well, I mean, to get to it, to get to it. It's still not and, like Starkville. And, but, uh, but Wyoming, shoot, they've won two in a row. They upset UNLV, which yep. was supposed to be turning the corner this year, and, uh, and, and they just won another one down at FAU. And so they've got New Mexico this weekend, which they should win. Two first-year head coaches out there, Mike Loxley, who has had a tough start there, former, former many ways. Florida coach. <laughs> yes. And and so, uh, absolutely going to go with Wyoming. I really enjoy going up there. You ever heard the beer song that they sing no. out there? In heaven, there is no beer. Say, no beer. No. No beer. That's why we drink it here, right here. Right here. When we're gone from here, all our friends will be drinking all our beer. All our beer. Nah, 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 nah. It's fun. We all kinds of fun that, stuff. All kinds of fun. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't let you know. This wasn't was as good bad. as Drew Copeland singing the that other day. Was bad. Yeah, it was. Here's a quick story about Starfield. We get there to fly out at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm at the front <laughs> desk. They have walkie talkie next to it, and the woman's talking to me. She goes, Yes, well, here you are on this seat. And all of a sudden, I hear the guy on the thing go, uh, This plane's broke. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I guess we won't be flying out right now. Oh. Well, she goes, it's canceled. Okay, Starkville, my favorite place. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Either Or. I want to thank James Bates and his lovely wife, Tina, over here for uh, coming in and, uh, and participating in the fifth Pat Dooley show. Thanks, my man. We should have had her hold the card that says Either Or. She like, could have done that, yeah. Rounds. Yeah, I go right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could have walked around. And now let's see what's in Dr. Football's email bag. All right, hope everybody enjoyed the fifth Pat Dooley show. But before we go, we have to get a question from Dr. Football's email bag. All right, Jimmy wants to know. He calls me Dr. Do. You don't know me well enough to call me Dr. Do. Once last week against Kentucky, Florida lined up in the power eye with Tebow behind center, a fullback, and one of our scat backs, a tailback. And what happens? Some guy does a jitterbug boot move and gets nailed. My question is, why don't we use a power runner like Moody it, when we're in there like that and stick it in there behind the fullback move the chains and then give it to the scat backs afterwards what is your obsession with emmanuel moody everybody is that way i get more questions about emmanuel moody than any player on the team except of course this week with tebow but uh, you know the bottom line is let the coaches do what they think works 
Emmanuel Moody's good. He's a very strong running back. But those guys can break tackles as well. Not only that, but we don't know what's happening in practice. Maybe Moody has fumble problems in practice the way he has in games. But the bottom line is you're leading the league in rushing, leading the SEC in scoring, leading the country, I believe, in, in total offense. And you're number one in the country. You're undefeated. Let the coaches coach. Don't worry about Emmanuel Moody. He'll get his chances. All right, that's going to do it for the fifth Pat Dooley Show. I want to thank everybody for clicking us on. Until next time, Pat Dooley saying so long from the Sunshine State. <laughs>